What's up, everybody? It's your favorite cute little homicidal maniac's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Mastermaid Overlord. This is on loan to me from Joel W. It was very kind of him to send it my way. He does have a few accessories, though, and we do need to get started, so what better time than the present? He comes with, as most of them have, a little friend, a little shockwave. It is very cool. We have... Uh, the ball peg for the head and the little orange paint for the eye and I think gray paint in there for the face plate And then I think these uh, ears are painted gray as well looks very good head up to there down to there And then of course the swivel confused dog look etc. We have translucent plastic on the chest The arms are on universal joints, which is crazy and it has a little like plastic hose and like I would be careful putting too much stress on this but it seems it seems to be holding up fairly well, and it might even be like a like a, a rubber. You know, I think maybe it is rubber. It's just a it's just a stiffer one, so to speak. Well done. So let's use the other arm. Universal joint gets you up to there and around. Outward movement is not uh, impinged at all. We have a bicep swivel, single hinged elbow that gets you a little bit past 90 degrees, and then nothing for the wrist. This side is the same, except you have the translucent um, cannon there, so that all works. No waist swivel, which is a little bit unfortunate, but what are you going to do? And then you have T-jointed ball joints, gets you the legs out to there, forward and back to there. Thigh swivels built around the ball peg. Not a great range, but I think it's more than you'll need. Orange paint on the pelvis. Ankles are on ball pegs. You get your ankle tilt up, down, and rocker. So it's a very cool little guy. Now, I'm not sure if this is optional or if it's a part of a deluxe set or if all of them come with it, but um, it's very cool. This piece here has batteries that go in the bottom, and then this turns it on and off, and then this sits down on top of it. The head is connected to the shoulders via a ball peg, and... What happens is when you turn it on, the light shines up through here, through this light piping, and then into the eyes. And that's pretty cool. And then you can just have this as like a little display piece in and of itself. And the heads are not swappable. Or maybe they are. And they can. So remove the head by pulling up, and you'll find this little T-joint. Then you can take this piece, which is the head and the shoulder piece, and then you can connect that on. Now the head is actually proportionate to the body, and that's pretty sweet. And then obviously you can use the old big head on the bust as well. It's painted very well. We have the tampo paint, we have the gray paint, we have um, the orange paint throughout. Down here we have a couple different silvers, or one different silver, I guess, here, 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 and here. Translucent pieces orange paint there down at the bottom i mean it's a, it's a bizarre thing to kind of include but you know not a not a not a hateful thing not a bad thing i'll take it he comes with this gun once again painted to the nines tampo paint orange paint etc like it, it looks really sharp and clean this hinges back and forth pegs on on the handle and then uh these pieces actually rotate you know for like the rockets that are in there on translucent plastic pieces so Cool. It does peg into his hand so that he can hold it. Uh, however, and it's possible I may be doing something wrong, but like you kind of have to have the thumb, it seems like, on the outside, uh, which is less than desirable because this would block it, obviously, from being put down. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, let me get this up a little bit. You can hold it well enough, you know, especially for like a pose and stuff, I don't think you'd ever notice. Or you can have his palm flipped facing up Use this peg on the gun to slide down, peg into the hand, and then this piece will actually come underneath, so to speak, and peg into the forearm and go with that look. He comes with two swords, and there's a little articulating handle here. There's plenty of paint apps. There's this little rotary piece in here. Once again, the tampo paint, and like it's really uh, beautiful per usual. And that will peg into the palm of his hand as well. You can also store them by using this grooved area here and sliding it down these rails in the back. Now these can also kind of bend in half here. I don't really advise you doing it. It doesn't feel good. And like it feels like you're putting stress against the, the plastic, but then you can have sort of wings on them too if you'd like. You're supposed to use this configuration when you're going to jet mode as well. However, this other one is really giving me a hard time and I'm scared to do it, but you would do it on both sides. And then of course it comes with the cockpit shield accessory. There's a couple of different configurations for this. Uh, I'll show them to you briefly, but they are nice. You have the translucent pieces, the tampo paint, kind of like business as usual in terms of how they do their business. You can rotate these down, the shoulder pieces, and then make sure that 
this is sitting the appropriate way and it will actually rest in here. Let me try to get this thing out of the way a little bit. But it's, uh, I'll tell you, it doesn't have like a firm connection, but you can kind of fake it till you make it sort of deal. You can also take this handle here and plug it into the palm and then wrap this around for more of a um, forearm shield piece, which looks good as well. Now the upgrade set with the bust also comes with these two swords. They're identical. You have the orange paint on there and the gray paint on there. He can hold those as well using the same tab system and they can slide down this channel here just like the other set of swords. And now let's talk about the figure. So we'll kind of cover gimmicks as we go. He has the gimmicks on the back too, where you put the batteries in, you press this button and it'll light up the eyes, which is cool. I don't have the batteries and they're not on here. So that is what it is, dim the rules. But we can take this headpiece off, so to speak, just to look at it. Would you look at it? The cool thing about this is the mouth is articulated. So there's like this little puppeteer action here on the back and you can kind of, you know, activate his mouth or jaw, you know what I mean? Pretty cool. And you can kind of twist it in the back, like turn it, you know, back and forth. Like, you know, and like maybe give a little, <laughs> I don't know, I'm something to do. But you can see how that works. And then the head is on a, a, a ball peg. So you'll get the swivel and then we'll see what else we can get out of her. You get a little bit down and a little bit up. So no issues there. Uh, the paint we've kind of already talked about, but we'll go through it again. We have um, tampo paint and then the orange paint looks good. Same for the torso and we have a waist swivel. It does kind of have a limited range, but I think it should get you everything that you want or need. And then the shoulders are on ratcheted universal, so you can get them up to at least 90 degrees and swivel them around with no problem. The arms have the tampo paint and then some orange or, or did I see some orange accents? No, but we do have some silver accents. So there you go. Now we have a bicep swivel built just above the elbow and then the elbows on a single ratcheted hinge that gets you past 90 degrees. The wrists are on a ball peg. That'll get you a swivel, a little bit up, down, a little bit in, out, not as much. The fingers are individually articulated on pinned hinges, which is optimal. And uh, these down here even have a little bit of wiggle waggle, you know what I mean? So you can get a little bit more um, expression, which is nice. And then you have the additional hinge and then the base hinge, of course. And then the thumb is on a hinge, a pinned hinge, which we don't often see, but it's nice. And then a secondary hinge here at the secondary knuckle. So really well done. The shoulders, of course, you can manipulate them a bit in order to kind of get the pose or desired angle. So that's cool as well. Same for the other side. Now, for the hips, this is where we run into our first issue. So they're universals. They are extremely tight. Like they, like Fans Toys got nothing on this guy. They get out for the full Van Dam. Yikers Island. And uh, a little limited on the forward and back movements. But I think for th this type of figure, that's fine. The tolerance obviously is not fine. The universal is built, uh, uh, the universal is tied into the thighs, which are built around them, causing a thigh swivel that is ultimately seamless. And then we have orange and silver paint there. All good. We have a single hinge knee that gets you 90 degrees and is a bit unsightly. But what are you going to do? Tons of tampo paint throughout, orange paint, silver paint. That looks good. Red paint down here. That looks good. Some gray paint in there, no issues whatsoever. The uh, the lower legs are sculpted, like it's a beautiful looking sculpt there. Then we have the feet, and they're actually on ball pegs, which is interesting, like they're angled ball pegs, which gets you an ankle tilt up, an ankle tilt down, and a rocker. The rocker's a little limited, but once again, not the biggest deal in the world for this type of figure. Pretty cool stuff, tons of tampo paint even on the feet. They did a really good job. The orange paint on the back looks nice. Speaking of the back, there he is from it. And you have this little bit of a gimmick here with the rocket launchers on his back. So that's cool as well. Overall, you know, par for the course with this company, a pretty well-made figure and unit. And, um, you know, I don't think they've really made a bad product yet. Some have been better than others. Uh, the Triptychon, I think, still being my favorite. The Omega Supreme is really good as well. But 
pretty good looking figure. Size comparison wise, I don't have anything necessarily that really makes a whole lot of sense. I don't have any of the other lines or offerings, but hopefully you have a masterpiece car. And if you do, this will give you a point of reference for how big he is. If you don't, hopefully you have everyone's favorite Patriot or another six inch Marvel legend, and that will give you a better idea. Let's get him transformed. Move the back plate up, move this piece up that keeps the top and bottom portions of the body connected. Now with the top part of the body removed, you can move this down. You can bring this whole back plate around. These two pegs will tab into the back of the abdomen area and these two tabs will tab in to the backpack. You can then rotate his hip flaps to the center and flip out these cannons here on the inside of the backpack. Rotate the shoulder pads up on both sides for a more streamlined look. Open up the forearm. Make sure that you have the hand where the fingers are straight. Tuck them around. Hinge that whole piece down. They'll sit up in there while you close the forearm and then make sure that the blades on the forearm are facing towards the outside. We'll do that again on this side. We're just gonna open up the forearm box we're going to turn the hand around so that the fingers are going to sit nice and flush and straight inside. We'll close this up, make sure that our blades are facing towards the outside. Spin the head 180, take your cockpit and peg it in with these two pegs into those two holes, covering up the face, and then you can bring this piece down and it'll sit right alongside that area as it should. And then we'll move on to the legs. So get this foot out of your way the best you can. I guess that's more of an ankle tilt down, isn't it? I should have talked about that. Oh well, I'm talking about it now, right? Get this up, get the knee down a little bit and then get it back up. It's the only way to kind of straighten it out. So we'll do that again, kind of show you. Uh, this is just to get your finger in there, so to speak bring the knee down a taste and then bring it back up and have it straight. Now, this is hard to say oriented for me, but you want to do it so that this little metal spring or pin or whatever it is so that you can see that at the top. And then bring this piece up, make sure your kneecap is all the way tucked around and bring your foot back up to the underside. And we're going to do that on both sides. Bring this piece up so that it forms the straight line, kneecap down and under, and then your foot down and back on the other side. Then make sure this is as squared up as you can, and you want to bend the blue piece down so that it sits against the back of these pieces here. Take your gun, make sure that the peg is going to fit in between the two uh, track sections, the front track sections, close it up, and then you can adjust this down. And there you have it, and I think they look really cool for what they are. Obviously they don't roll or anything, but you do have the landing gear that you can put down, that's pretty sweet. I mean, I think it's indicative, I think it looks like it lives within universe of this company and their kind of general aesthetic, like, I think the tank looks pretty interesting, like, I don't know, I think they did a great job. I think they did a great job. The, the wings are very frustrating, just that it's just one in particular on mine, but that's not the best. But yeah, I think I think this works, you know, especially for what they're trying to do. Like it looks on par, you know? There it is with tire tracks. So let's get it to base mode. Now I've taken off the jet uh, pieces, like the, actually like the wings in the cockpit. But we're gonna untab this and I can tell you, it's the not the easiest thing to do. We're gonna get this up, we're gonna tuck these in. We're going to use our forearms as kind of the stabilizers. So we're gonna rotate them around and then bend at the elbow uh, on both sides. You know, not a whole lot new under the sun there. I just took the cannon out. We're gonna bring back the thighs to the, uh, the correct kind of placement. And we're gonna put these back where they belong and we're going to put a lot of this back together so we're going to straighten out this and this and bring this around
rotate the knee so that it sits back where it's supposed to, but you can keep these cannon parts open here. But we're gonna keep this flat. And then the same for this side, we're going to open this up, move the knee, rotate this down, put the knee in the proper placement, keep your cannons up, keep the foot down. And now we have to combine them. So ultimately, you want uh, the green to be on this side, but you need this to be on the other side. So when you start, start with the green on the same side as the head is facing and make sure that your latch is up here. Bring these pieces down and fit into those grooves. And then this comes down and locks in. Then you can turn this whole piece around And now you're kind of in business. So we'll collapse this back down. And then you just add on all your extra stuff. Your cockpit plugs into the back piece. Your gun part uses the blue handle for the front. And then you just slide your wings in the same way that we have done you know, kind of previously. And that's it. I'll get it cleaned up, we'll take a look at it. And I think it's pretty cool. I, you know, I'm, I, I've said this before, but I'm pretty lean, you know, on base modes, like I'm kind of easy to please. I, I, I grew up in the playset era, I just enjoy it. So, um, yeah, you can get a couple little actions out of it, like you can swivel this a little bit from where it plugs in, and you can kind of aim these a little bit, and I guess you could really, you could bring up these, I mean, they'd be shooting at their own base, but if you wanted to, you could. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, but it's pretty effective. I do wonder how I would like it if you like, cause I guess, I guess you could take off the gun, take off uh, this kind of configuration here and then raise it up and do something different with it. I might try to do something real quick with it, but overall, I mean, I think it's pretty effective at what it's supposed to be. And there's like another little one I came up with, you know, like, and, I, and like, it's not perfect, you know, and maybe it'll even look better without that, but like, I don't know, I think that looks pretty cool too, and it's just by like kind of manipulating the pieces around and creating your own little base, so I, I dig that. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negative. And, and they're honestly, they're, they're pretty easy to point out. It's tolerance issues. There's tolerance issues on the hips, right? I think that that's pretty self-explanatory. There's tolerance issues on the wings or the swords where they have to like kind of come apart and create a different configuration. And even where some of this stuff kind of tabs in, it kind of suffers from the same problem in that regard. But honestly, that's it. That's my only real complaint I have about this thing. So many positives. Great materials, great build, great paint, cool transformation, and fun modes. How often would you see me do like a fan mode thing? That's not my bag. I don't care about that kind of stuff. But it just has a fun factor to it that makes you want to mess with it. So yeah, it's a strong recommend for me if you're into this sort of aesthetic or you like a little fun bot to kind of mess with or you're a huge Overlord fan because Overlord, you know, is more of an obscure character. So like, it's pretty cool. I don't think you need the upgrade set you know, to kind of really enjoy this figure. I found myself not really wanting to use the straight swords really at all. And I kind of like the big old head on them. I think it's part of the charm. So thanks again to Joel and thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.